Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Hare Krishna. We can begin. All right. Oh, we're speaking about the, the birds. I was just thinking, you know, <laughs> the birds, it, it, it's, it, it's a, a problem sometimes. We, we don't always appreciate who are these great souls in these different bodies. Just like I'm living here in Mayapur just now, and there's so many birds. <laughs> but I don't always, I, I can't always think of them that they're great sages. But actually we should think like that, that these, these birds, these different creatures who've taken their birth in the Holy Dham, that they may be great sages, great souls, and they're taking birth for, this, for their continued enlightenment. We don't know actually who they are. But we should respect all the residents of the Dham. The trees as well should never take, harm a tree, should never break the branches of the trees and Dham. Rather we, we embrace them and we, uh, we, we want to get the mercy from these creatures. That they're very special, very fortunate. So that was just something I was thinking about. Okay, we're on text number 15. And we're going to hear, in text number 15, we're going to hear about the rivers. Uh, the waters which flow in the dam. Who could read it for us? Can I make a comment before that, Maharaj? Yes, Prabhu, please, yes. As this was this regarding the last verse, <clears throat> the birds and the sages. Uh, I have heard an explanation that why birds are compared to the sages. It's like those birds, they used to climb on the different branches just to see Krishna. Similarly, the sages, they go on to the different branches of the Vedic tree, different Upanishads, etc., to know Krishna. And we as Vaishnavas, our branch is Srimad Bhagavatam from where we can clearly see Krishna. Ah, yes. Thank you, Prabhu. Very nice comment. Oh, yes, that's a very good comment. Thank you so much. And uh, Maharaj, one more regarding the rasas which you were discussing. I'm sorry that time my video was off. I couldn't give comment, Maharaj. Can I make it now? Please. Maharaj, for the rasas, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. He has explained that in Vaikuntha there are two and a half rasas and in uh, Goloka five rasas. Oh, so, really? Uh, when he says two and a half rasas, he means that uh, Shanta rasa in completeness and Dasya rasa in completeness and all other rasas are taken as half. So that is uh, because they are not in completeness in uh, Vaikuntha. But when he speaks about uh, Goloka, he says the five rasas are in completeness, but all the rasas are because there is dominance of Madhurya, so all the rasas are touched by Madhurya. Okay. Yes, that sounds nice. All the all the rasas are touched by Madhurya. Mm -hmm. Yes, that I've heard like that before. That Madhurya rasa is very prominent there in Goloka. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you very much, Prabhu. That's from Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, eh? Uh, yes, Maharaj, exact reference right now. I don't have, but I read it in one of the uh, issues of Harmonist, and he has written in some other book, Maharaj. I can find out and let you know it. Right now, I don't have the reference. No, it's okay. I, I'm happy to hear that from you, though. It's very nice. Thank you yes. so much. Thank you. All right, who's going to chant text number 15? Maharaj Tani. Yes, Maharaji, please. Nadas tata tadupadharaya mukunda geetam avritta lakshita mano bhava bhanga vega alingas urmi buddha gai murare Grani Grananti Pada Yugalam Kamalo Pahara. Oh, yes, thank you. Very nice. Translation. When the rivers hear the flute song of Krishna, their minds began to desire him. 
and thus the flow of their current is broken and their waters are agitated, moving around in whirlpools. Then, with the arms of their waves, the rivers embrace Murari's lotus feet and holding on to them, present offering of lotus flowers. Mm. <laughs> yes. And read the purport a little, it's not much. Yes, Maharaj. Even such sacred bodies of water as the Yamuna and Manasa Ganga are enchanted by the flute song, and thus they are disturbed by conjugal attraction for young Krishna. The gopis are implying that since many different types of living beings are overwhelmed by conjugal love for Krishna, why should the gopis be criticized for their intense desire to serve Krishna in the conjugal relationship? <laughs> yes. Why should we criticize the gopis if all the others are also having conjugal love for Krishna? So why condemn the gopis? Everyone's doing it, right? <laughs> the demigod, the, the, demi, the wives of the demigods are doing it, and the, the, the does and the bucks are doing it, and the cows and the calves are doing it. And so why should we criticize the, the gopis? What's wrong? We shouldn't. Uh, it mentions in this verse about Murari. So the gopis, they, they pray like that. They pray that uh, Murari, that they, that, that they pray that the Cupid or Mara, that, that is killing them. So Krishna should come and save them. <laughs> Like Krishna killed the demon Mura, and so the gopis also pray that the gopis they're being killed by by the, the the lusty desires in their hearts are killing them, so they want Krishna to come and and slay the demon Mura, and save them. So the these rivers, the Yamuna or Kalindi and Manasiganga. And sometimes they will show these whirlpools. So these whirlpools, that's like a display of their of their their kind of lust which is there, which is manifest in them. The influence of the lust causes the whirlpool and it stops at when the when the when the water gets caught in the whirlpool, then it stops flowing towards the ocean, and the ocean is actually like the husband of the rivers. The rivers are, are feminine; they're like the wives, and the ocean is the husband. But when they hear the sound of Krishna's flute, then you get the whirlpool, and the, and, and the water doesn't flow to the sea anymore, and, and it's like the go. It's like uh, the rivers have lost all their, they've lost all their control and all their shyness, and the water starts to swell. And there will be waves, and those waves are like arms, and those arms will embrace the lotus feet of Krishna, who is also called Marari, who is standing on the shore of the the river bank. So in, in this way, the 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 river offers. Uh, take shelter of Lord Krishna. So, Kamala, the word Kamala is used to it described as being lotus, but it can also mean water and it can also mean wealth. So, the point is that they are offering their wealth to Krishna. And again, although the rivers are so attracted to Krishna, the ocean doesn't hold any bad feelings towards their love to Krishna. So the gopis are appreciating again, the rivers are more fortunate than we are. Their husband's favourable. We see similar pastimes and with the Ganga, for example, when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was here in Mayapur, how the Ganga would swell and touch the lotus feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. 
and there's a, there's, a, there's a point where the ocean flows up. It said the ocean flows up. When the tide comes in, then the ocean flows up the Ganga, up the path of the Ganga, and it flows all the way up to a certain point there. It said that that point, the, the ocean flows all the way up because he's so eager to see the lotus feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He wants to get the dust, he wants to take the dust from the feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So in this way the ocean flowed up the Ganga to be able to touch the lotus feet of Lord Chaitanya. We see Lord Krishna enjoying his pastimes with the Ganga and with the Yamuna. These two rivers particularly are very dear to the Lord. Okay, we'll go ahead. Text number 16. May I read Maharaj? Yes. Only. Okay, okay. You will pretty much. Dristva tape rajabasun saharama go pai Sanchara yantam anuve no mudara yantam Prema pravrudda udita kusuma valimbi Sakyur yadatsva vapusambuddha atapataram Translation mm -hmm. In the company of Balarama and the cowherd boys Lord Krishna is continuously vibrating his flute as he heard all the animals of Praja, even under the full heat of the summer sun. Seeing this, the cloud in the sky has expanded himself out of love. He is rising high and constructing out of his own body with its multitude of flower-like droplets of water, an umbrella for the sake of his friend. <laughs> Go ahead, read the purport. Srila Prabhupada states in his Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the scratching heat of the autumn sunshine was sometimes intoler intolerable, and therefore the clouds in the sky appeared in sympathy above Krishna and Balaram and their boyfriends while they engaged in blowing their flutes. The clouds served as a soothing umbrella over their heads just to make friendship with Krishna. Right. So this is Sakya Ras. <laughs> we were saying, uh, you know, everything in, everything in Vrindavan and uh, Goloka Vrindavan is Madhurya Ras, but it's tinged with all the other Rasas also. So here you can see the clouds also. The, this cloud is a particular friend of Krishna. Why are they friends? Of course, they, they, they have the same color, right? Krishna is like the rain cloud and here's the cloud. <laughs> so they have similar color. So that's one reason why they're friends. But there are some other things also. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur talks about them. He said, uh, they both take away the suffering of the living entities by, their, by giving a shower of rasa, <laughs> the shower of ras. So it takes away the suffering of the living entities. The rain cloud was like an umbrella over Krishna, and, but at the same time there were some drops of water to keep Krishna cool from the heat. So there's a shower of rasa which gives relief to the living entities and then they're both dark colored and they both have the color of lightning. Krishna's dhoti is the color of lightning. Gold and yellow Krishna's dhoti. So somehow this is compared to the cloud and both give off sweet sounds. So Krishna, the sweet sound. The clouds give happiness to Krishna. 
the gopis say the clouds can give happiness to Krishna, but we cannot, the gopis say. How unfortunate we are. So the rumbling of the clouds. Uh, when, the, when the clouds rumble, that's when the peacock stands. And when Krishna plays the flute, sometimes when the peacocks will hear Krishna playing the flute, they will think this is the rumbling of the clouds and they will also dance. So this is the, the sweet sound, the, the similar sounds. Krishna's flute and the rumbling of the clouds, very sweet and pleasing to all living entities. So the clouds like a, a, a light umbrella over the friend, over its friend Krishna. And, and the cloud is able to expand his body so that he can cover the area, so that he can give shelter to Krishna from the scorching heat of the sun. And he can cool Krishna, he's able to cool Krishna by droplets of water. So the Acharyas describe how the cloud increases its size due to its prema, because it has this prema, is in, in this prema of love of Krishna, so it's a, it expands itself to cover Krishna and Balaram and all the cowherd boys from the, the scorching heat of the sun. Right? That's number six, 16. Going ahead, 17. Someone can read? I can read? Yes. Puna Pulinda Uriga Epada Jaraga Sri Kungome Nadayeta Stana Manditena Tadar Sanas Mararu just turn a rusitena Limpante Anna Nekuche Suja Hustaladin. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Translation The Aboriginal women of the Vindavan area became disturbed by lust when they see the grass marked with reddish kumkum powder. Endowed with the color of Krishna's lotus feet, this powder originally decorated the breast of his beloveds. And when the Aboriginal women smear it on their faces and breasts, they feel fully satisfied and give up all, anxiety, all their anxiety. Yes. Would you like to read the purple Prabhu? Uh, yes, Maharaj. Srila Prabhupada explains this verse as follows. The wanton Aboriginal girls also became fully satisfied when they smeared their faces and breasts with the dust of Vrindavan, which was reddish from the touch of Krishna's lotus feet. The Aboriginal girls had very full breasts and they were also very lusty. But with their lovers felt their breasts, they were not very satisfied. When they came out into the midst of the forest, they saw that while Krishna was walking, some of the leaves and creepers of Vindavan had turned reddish from the kumkum powder which fell from his lotus feet. His lotus feet were held by the gopis on their breasts, which were also smeared with kumkum powder. But when Krishna traveled in the Vindavan forest with Balram, and his boyfriends, the reddish powder fell on the ground. So the lusty Aboriginal girls, while looking towards Krishna playing his flute, saw the reddish kumkum on the ground and immediately took it and smeared it over their faces and breasts. In this way, they became fully satisfied, although they were not satisfied with their lovers touched when their lovers touched their breasts. All mentally lusty desires can be immediately satisfied if one comes in contact with Krishna Consciousness. Thank you, Prabhu. Yes, so very nice point by Prabhupada here. All material desires can be satisfied immediately when we come in contact with Krishna Consciousness. So this example is very interesting. We're hearing about the, the dust, this uh, kumkum powder, which falls on the ground and where does it come from? And what is the nature of this dust? 
Why is it so powerful? It's so powerful that just simply by these Aborigine women putting it on their own faces and on their own breasts, that they give up their lusty desires. So then this, it shows us something of the power of this dust. What is this dust? This kumkum. Where is it coming from actually? Um, so it's described to us that this is actually coming from one of Krishna's lovers. And of course Krishna's lover is actually Srimati Sri Radhika or Srimati Radharani. So it was the dust from her lotus feet. The, the, the dust from her lotus feet or from her breasts, wherever it came from, somehow it was on Krishna and then it fell off Krishna and fell on the ground. And these Aborigine ladies, the, the what are they called, the Palingas? Hmm? The Palingas? They, they got the dust and they took it and they put it on their faces and they put it on their breasts and they felt the, the effect of it. And the effect was that they were fully satisfied. But it's pointed out when their husbands or when their lovers touched them, they didn't feel satisfaction. They didn't feel that. So this is the special nature, the dust from the feet of such a great devotee. The, the verse doesn't really speak about Srimati Radharani here because the gopis, they, they want, they, they're very shy. They want to cover up. But it, it, it's, when we think about it, it's, it very clearly indicates that this powder must have originally decorated the form or the body of Srimati Radharani. Because she is the, the one who actually Krishna loves more than anybody. So that reddish kumkum powder was taken up and that's how the Pulindas, the Aborigine ladies, became free of their lusty desires. Is that clear? Everybody under everybody agree on that? Any points? Okay. Hi Krishna Guru Maharaj, I have a question about the last sentence of this purport. Uh-huh. Because all material lusty desires can be immediately satisfied. So we see people they contact with Krishna consciousness, they still have a lot of lusty desires. How can we understand immediately satisfied? Well, we have to understand that they were not fully in Krishna consciousness. If they were actually in contact with Krishna consciousness properly, then their lusty desires would be satisfied. And if people are not satisfied, then it means they're not properly situated in Krishna consciousness. It's that simple. It's not just it's not just anybody who comes to the Krishna consciousness movement will experience relief from all lusty desires. But they have to take up the process seriously. They have to follow. They have to do it properly. But certainly there's no, there's no doubt in the efficacy of the Krishna consciousness process. It's going to work, it's going to take effect. But they have to follow properly. And if they do it properly, then immediately they'll feel the effect. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. So the, the Pulinda ladies, they reach perfection. The gopis are saying, the Palinda women, they have achieved perfection, we haven't. We want to inquire about the, what, what, what about their austerities? <laughs> what did they do? You know? <laughs> Why are they perfect? They took the dust from the feet of such a great devotee. Where did this kumkum come from? It came from the breast of his beloved Radha, Srimati Radharani. 
Then the, the gopis say, we are desiring to praise her good fortune, but we're not so bold. Instead, we just praise the Pulinda women. Actually, we should praise Srimati Radharani. It's her dust. But we're praising the Palinda women. <laughs> we don't want to give too much attention to Srimati Radharani. Hmm. And the Palinda ladies, they didn't give, any, didn't give any proper respect. What did they do? They just took the, 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 the dust and they smeared it on themselves. They found it on the grass and they covered their faces and their breasts with it. So what would happen if they saw Krishna? If they actually saw Krishna, then they would also want to get the fragrance of Krishna's body. They would want to enjoy, just as Radha was enjoying with Krishna. So thinking like that, they were, they, the Palinda ladies, they were also thinking about being enjoyed by Krishna. So in this way they were able to actually get relief from their lusty desires. Because they were thinking, taking that dust, putting it over their bodies, that they, were, they, they imagined themselves that they are being enjoyed by Krishna. So the gopis say, we have not received that dust even once. That kumkum has a special power in it. But in all our births, we have not received it even once. <laughs> all right, so we go ahead, text number? 18. 18, yes. Maharaj. Yes, please. Antaya Madrid Abhala Haridasa Vario Yadrama Krishna Charana Sparasha Pramodha Manam Tanoti Sahago Gana Yostar Tayoriad Pani Yat Pani Asuyava Sakandarak Kandamulai Kandamulai Yes Of all the devotees this Govardhan hill is the best. Oh my friends, this hill supplies Krishna and Balram, along with their calves, cows and cowherd friends, with all kinds of necessities, water for drinking, very soft grass, caves, fruits, flowers and vegetables. In this way, the hill offers respects to the Lord being touched by the by the lotus feet of Krishna and Balram, Govardhana Hill appears very jubilant. Perfect? Yes, please. This translation is quoted from Srila Prabhupada's Chaitanya Charita Amrita Madhya Lila 18.34. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur explains the opulence of Govardhana Hill as follows. Pani refers to the fragrant cool water from the Govardhana waterfalls which Krishna and Balram drink and use to wash their feet and mouths. Govardhana also offers other beverages such as honey, mango juice and pilu juice. Suyavasa indicates durva grass used to make the religious offerings of argya Govardhana also has grass that is frag fragrant, soft and conducive to the strong growth of cows and increased production of milk. This is, this, uh, thus, this grass is used for feeding the transcendental herds, Kandara. Ah, <laughs> very good, thank you. All right, so Govardhan is described here by the gopis. 
Haridasa Varyao, of course, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he went to Vrindavan and when he was going around Govardhan Hill, he would sing this verse. This verse was chanted by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as he walked around the Govardhan Hill. So the next time you go, get the chance to go around Govardhan Hill or when you're doing Govardhan Puja, you can remember this verse. This is a nice verse to chant and teach everyone the glories of Govardhan Hill. How Govardhan Hill is Haridasavaryo, the greatest, the best of all the servants of Lord Hari. And in Srimad Bhagavatam, there are three people actually who are called Haridas. There's Maharaj Yudhisthira, and there's Uddhava, and there's Govardhan Hill. And of the three, it's Govardhan Hill who is the best. He's, he's not just Haridas, but he's Haridas of Aryo. He's the best of all the devotees of Lord Hari. Why is he the best? Well, it's described in this verse. All the wonderful service which he's doing. All the nice grass which he grows on the Govardhan Hill, which is for the cows there as they graze on Govardhan Hill. And originally there were waterfalls on the Govardhan Hill and the cows could, and the, Krishna and Balaram would drink the water and be refreshed and they could bathe their feet and they could do Akshman and they could do Argya, everything. The, the, the water was very pure. Not only that, but there were fruits growing on the trees, fruits like uh, mango, and pilu, and there were many nectarian drinks also. Different fruit drinks were also available there. Honey was also flowing from some of the trees. And then there was also the uh, roots, the mula and the kanda different kinds of roots which grow there and Krishna would eat these roots. I told you the other day about them, right? The mula and the kunda, these kind of things which grow in the ground there. And, and they would, in, the, in that, this particular time of the year, autumn, when Krishna would come there, they would be soft and the cowherd boys, they would enjoy eating these things. And the cows would enjoy also to come to Govardhan Hill because nice grass there, very good grass and also nice water to drink. But not only that, there were other things as well. There were caves there to give shelter from the heat or from the rain. And there's also the gully where the gopis used to have to cross to go through to cross the, to go over then to go to the market to sell their wares, there was the Dana Keli, right, where Krishna would perform that pastime, taking tax from the gopis to go through to cross the Govardhan Hill. And these stones on the Govardhan Hill are very, very special. That in the summer, when it's very hot, the stones are cool. But in the winter, in the cold weather, the stones are warm. So the stones are very kind and they, they reciprocate, taking care of the gopi, taking care of the devotees, not giving any pain to the, gopi, to, the, to the devotees as they walk around the Govardhan hill. And now also it is warm? Now it's now the stones are warm. Yes, if you walk around Govardhan, the stones they don't get very cold. Other stones will be very cold, but the, the stones from Govardhan, they they're not so cold. Of course, we don't usually like to walk on the Govardhan hill. We won't like to walk. We walk around the Govardhan hill. So even the stones, we wouldn't, we wouldn't walk so much on the stones, right? We're going to walk around them.
like mud. And Krishna could put his lotus footprint into the stone. And there's a stone like that with Krishna's lotus footprint. And you could see the marks also of Krishna's lotus feet there and the stone of Govardhan. So that's the nature of the stones in Govardhan, that they can become soft like mud just for the pleasure of Lord Krishna. And we see also if you go to uh, Alalanath, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would go to Alalanath when there was no darshan of Lord Jagannath, when Lord Jagannath, after the bathing of Jagannath, then there's no darshan for two weeks. So at that time, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would go to Alalanath and he would stay there. And there, you can see on the floor there how the floor melted in contact with the body of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. How the stone also, the stones there in the temple became soft due to the touch of the body of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So also the Govardhan stone, also particular stone is there. I think that there was one stone Krishna personally gave to Sanatana Goswami because Sanatana Goswami he had the program that every day he would walk around Govardhan Hill and he got old and it became very troublesome but still he would not give up. So Lord Krishna took sympathy on him and Lord Krishna appeared to Sanatana Goswami and told him that now you're old, you don't need to do this. But he said, no, I have to do it, I should do it. So then Lord Krishna gave him a stone from Govardhan Hill. He put his footprint in it and then gave it to Sanatana. He said, you simply walk around this stone and this is as good as going around the whole Govardhan Hill. So that stone is still worshipped today, right? Where is it worshipped? Radha Damada Temple in Vrindavan. Yes, right. You can see it there. Mm. So Govardhan, the very best of all the devotees and the, the best of all the mountains and best of all the devotees of Lord Hari, mm. surrounded by so many wonderful holy places. As you go around Govardhan Hill, it's, it, it, it's, it's just so amazing. There's so many things to see. There's so many things to talk about when you go around the Govardhan Hill that you can never get enough time. So we want to appreciate anyway. The gopis certainly appreciated the glories of Govardhan Hill. And they're, they're talking actually. They said, we should go to Govardhan Hill because we will see Krishna there. And it will be... Uh, it will be a good chance for us to actually see Krishna because we, we've not seen Krishna. We want to see Krishna. So if we go to Govardhan, he's probably there with the cows and we'll see him there. We'll be able to have his darshan. Okay. So Govardhan, the best of all the devotees of Lord Hari. The identity of Govardhan is interesting. That We say Govardhan is Krishna, but he's also a devotee of Krishna. He's not just simply a devotee and he's not just Krishna, he's both. He's both Krishna and he's Krishna's devotee. That's how I heard it explained anyway, that Govardhan is both the devotee and he's also Krishna. Krishna himself assumes the form of Govardhan Hill and he accepts all the offerings, of course. And we don't walk on the Govardhan Hill. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught us that. And the Lord of Govardhan is Hari Dev, the deity of Hari Dev. A wonderful temple to go and see. When you go to Govardhan, go and see Hari Dev. All right, so we'll go ahead with just a text 19. Who would like to read text 19? Uh, can I do it? Please, Prabhu. Gagopakairanuvanam nayaturudara Venusvanai kalapadaistanubhrustu sakya 
ಅಶ್ಪಂದನಂ ಗತಿಮತಾಂಪುಲಕಸ್ತರುಣ ನಿರ್ಯೋಗ ಪಾಶಕೃತ so the the word there's mentioned there this near yoga pasha the ropes for binding the rear legs of the cows sometimes when you're milking a cow <laughs> it's one of the dangers in milking the cows that sometimes the cows will kick you so you have to be very careful when you're going to milk a cow and some cows are not so gentle and if you get kicked by the cow then it, it can, it's very painful we were hearing naraini she was telling that radhanath maharaj was when he, before he took sanyas he was often taking care of cows and milking cows so there was one cow who was very difficult to milk so they decided what they do they tie her legs tie both legs not just one tie both legs so they tied up both legs and when he went to milk her the cow went to kick and she fell over and she fell over on top of him <laughs> and the cow fell on top of him and they had to the devotees had to come and somehow move the cow to get radnath out from underneath the cow <laughs> and and he he described that when he got out he said he looked at the cow and she looked at him and she said if you ever do that again <laughs> don't you ever do that again or else i'll really get you i'll really let you have it <laughs> so milking cows is <laughs> it, it it's uh not surprising some ways why people, you know it became it's become a mechanized industry which is not good if we want the milk of course people like vegans they won't drink milk but we argue that milk is actually very important food and it is necessary for the development of the brain the people like vegans they argue against that they say no it's very cruel you take the milk from the cows it's meant for the calves but it's not meant for the calves at, after a certain point and not too much should be given to the calves for some time you give the milk to the calves and but, and, but not too much otherwise they will get sick and the, the calves also have to eat grass learn to eat grass and chew grass so the vegans say they don't like this and, and veganism somehow has become a quite popular around the world many people have taken to this vegan diet but we are we are we're lacto vegetarians we use milk products and we say milk is actually given it's a gift of god that the cow eats grass and she gives milk so in order to get the milk you have to milk and it's much nicer to milk the cows by hand than to milk them by some machine you put the cows under some machine you attach it to machine then these machines they completely drain every drop of blood out from the cow we have to understand that cow's milk is the transformation of the blood of the cow probably sometimes tell us that people want to eat meat because they like the taste of blood 
So Prabhupada would explain that actually the proper way to taste the blood is drink milk. Milk is the transformation of the blood of the cow. And we get milk when, the, when you milk the cow. You, have, you milk the cows. And some cows, they, they give milk for many years. And it's not that they always have to have calves in order to give milk. Generally, that's the rule, that they need calves to give milk. But there are cows which will give milk without any calf. They're very, very pious cows, Kamadenu cows. So Krishna and Balaram, they were, as young boys, they were in, the, there's this uh, mood of taking care of the cows. When they were young children, young children and growing up, they were in the Vatsalyaras. They were being taken care of by their mother and father. But then they start to grow up a little bit and they're more with the boys, the cowherd boys and so on. That's Sakyaras. But as they get a bit more grown up still, they come to Madhuryaras and they enjoy the pastimes with the, with, the, with the gopis. That Krishna has his gopis, and Balarama, he has also his gopis, different, different groups of gopis, not the same. Whenever Krishna is with Srimati Radharani, then Balaram will not be there. If Balaram is there, then Radharani can never come. We were hearing like that. They said, oh, Krishna's with Balaram. Our mission is defeated. The gopis cannot go to see Krishna when Balaram is there with him because Krishna's in the mood. A different ras, he's in Sakya ras, he's enjoying being with his friends. But when the gopis, when the gopis come, it has to be Krishna on his own. So it's, it's very wrong if you put Gornitai with Radha and Krishna. Gornitai shouldn't be on the altar with Radha and Krishna. They have to have separate altars. So that's why we see one altar for Gornitai, one altar for Radha Krishna, another altar for Krishna Balaram. Different rasas. All right, we'll go ahead. We just finish off the final text. Who would like to read final text for us? Bimal Prabhu. Mm -hmm. All right. Evam Vidhaka Vato Tavindavarna Charina Varna Yanto Mito Gopya Tirastan Mayatam Yayu Yes, right? Translation? Thus narrating uh, to one another the playful pastimes of the Supreme Personality of God as he wandered about in the Vrindavan forest, the gopis became fully absorbed in thoughts of him. Mm -hmm. I'll read the purport. Shilu, in this regard, Srila Prabhupada comments, This is the perfect example of Krishna consciousness. To somehow or other remain always engrossed in thoughts of Krishna. The vivid example is always present in the behavior of the gopis. Therefore, Lord Chaitanya declared that no one can worship the Supreme Lord by any method that is better than the method of the gopis. The gopis were not born in very high brahmana or kshatriya families. They were born in the families of Vaishyas and not in big mercantile communities, but in the families of cowherd men. They were not very well educated, although they heard all sorts of knowledge from the brahmanas, the authorities of Vedic knowledge. The gopis' only purpose was to remain always absorbed in thoughts of Krishna. 
Thus then, the purports of the humble servants of his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, to the 10th canto, 21st chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam, entitled, The Gopis Glorify the Song of Krishna's Flute. So this final text is like a summary of what's been taught throughout the, the chapter. Lord Krishna had come to the forest of Vrindavan and the gopis were absorbed and thought of him. And we're hearing how they think of Krishna. We're heard about their different feelings towards the flute particularly. The, and we heard the effect of the flute, how the flute, the sound of the flute affected all the different living entities all over the creation from the, the birds to the... In the Brihad Bhagavatam Rita, Sanatana Goswami also talks about the bees, how the bees are also affected, and many, and the different creepers and plants, how they are affected. We heard about the rivers, how they were affected. And we heard some gopis, some of the gopis obviously were, they were married, because they were talking about their husbands, that we're very unfortunate if even a fragrance of Krishna comes there, my husband gets very angry, the husband can get violent even. So obviously some of the gopis were married. We're hearing their, their different moods and remembering Krishna, the different emotions, hearing the sound of Krishna and we heard, then we heard just now the glories of Govardhan Hill and how Govardhan Hill is very, very dear to Lord Krishna. And that Lord Krishna would go there almost daily and he would take his cows there and they would enjoy. Many pastimes took place at Govardhan Hill. So in this way, the gopis were describing the glories of Lord Krishna's flute. Okay, are there any final questions or comments from anyone? Maharaj, may I ask something, Maharaj? Yes, please, Maharaji. Um, Maharaj, I heard that anyone who is uh, inimical towards Krishna, they are not allowed entry in Vrindavan. So um, I was wondering about the husbands of these gopis uh, who are uh, who become angry even if there is some smell from Krishna like that. So how do we understand it correctly, Maharaj? Thank you. Thank you. Well, they may they may not actually be in Vrindavan. You see, they're not actually seeing Vrindavan, although there are residents there in that place. They're simply in Vrindavan on the map. They're not actually in the holy place. You see, there are many people who live in Vrindavan and they think of Vrindavan as just some place on the map. Srila Prabhupada used to tell us, you don't enter Vrindavan just by buying a ticket. And so it's not just, and I, I quoted also Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada, he's saying, who is actually a Vrajbasi? It's, people who actually walk as devotees. They will chant the holy name of Krishna and they will glorify Krishna and they'll hear the glories of Krishna. They're the actual bridge buses. These other people, they may be living in some physical place which is on the map, but they're not actually seeing the holy dam. The holy dam is covered for them. But it's true, without being devotees, they're not allowed in admit, admittance into the Holy Land. And that's true also in Jagannath Puri. Uh, one time there was a big atheist came there in Jagannath Puri. And the head priest came and he, he told him, go, get out of here. You're not allowed here. Lord Jagannath said, you cannot stay here. You get out from this top place. So certainly Vrindavan, to actually enter into Vrindavan, we have to develop the mood like Akrura 
As Akrura went to Vrindavan, what was his mood in going to Vrindavan to see Krishna? So we have to develop that kind of attitude to actually enter into the holy dham. We have to change the consciousness. It's not enough just to be there, just to take birth. You may take birth there. Who is actually the dham vasis? So we have to see the consciousness. But still, we, we, will, we would respect them. We, we have to respect everyone. And the fact that they're husbands of a gopi, then that's very great fortune, right? That, that they may, may not be devotees, but at least their wives are great devotees. So they're certainly they're, they must have some kind of special mercy to have that opportunity to be with a devotee who is a very dear devotee to Lord Krishna. I was thinking about the cows being in Vatsalya Ras. It was mentioned also that when Lord Brahma stole away all the cows and cowherd boys, at that time Lord Krishna took the place of all the cows and cowherd boys. And that time Lord Krishna would go to the, all the different ladies because they were the mothers of the cowherd boys and Lord Krishna would drink their milk. So all the ladies in Vrindavan, they were all like Krishna's mother. But m more than that, they, they have that love for Krishna, right? The, the, the Vatsalya Ras is only a part of it, but the people in Vrindavan, they're more in, it's all Madhurya Ras. They have this, so much attraction and attachment to Krishna, that they love Krishna so much, they cannot stop thinking of him. They cannot, they cannot give him up at any point. Everything he does, every moment, every th action, that it is so pleasing and it, it, and it stays with them and enters the hearts of the gopis, enters the hearts of all these devotees, all these people in Vrindavan who are seeing Krishna. The birds, somehow, they close their eyes, they don't look, but they hear the sound of the flute. So the sound of the flute. Sound is important, right? It's sound. Prabhupada said, we don't give so much attention to seeing. Hearing is important. Sometimes people say, I want to see God. If God is there, I want to see Him. Prabhupada said, why do you want to see? Why can't you hear? He's speaking to you. He's speaking Bhagavad Gita, he's speaking scripture, every day he's speaking, you can hear. Why don't you hear him? And so we have to purify ourselves by hearing, then it will become more appreciative of actually seeing Krishna. We don't see Krishna with the eyes, you have to see Krishna with the heart. There's a story, the blind man wanted to go and see Krishna and his friend said, why, you, you, you won't see anything, you can't see Krishna. He said, I want Krishna to see me. So the idea is to be seen by Krishna. Krishna is the seer, we're the seen, we have to be seen. But Krishna is the actual seer. Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati used to speak on that point a lot. To be, to be seen by Krishna, not to be the seer. All right, so thank you very much for your association. And I hope you all have a very nice uh, Bhaktivedanta. I hope the rest of the course will go very well for you. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to share whatever, whatever little bit I know <laughs> I, I certainly learned a lot from your association. So thank you all very much and wish you good luck with the rest of the course. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Go back to Brinda Ki. Hare Krishna.